I'm here with my streaming of Rebellion Secret Game Second Stage. It's been quite a long time since the last stream, I know. Six months, in fact. Just sorry, Bell, that I've just been very busy and then a bunch of unexpected stuff happened, but finally I've got a um finally I got um more time where I can do this again. Although um I will get a little busy in a in about a month, but that shouldn't last too long, and then I should be back to more streaming. But yeah, you know, for now, um, I'm back to this, and I'm aiming the aim to be finishing Rebellions up soon since we're close to the end. Now it's been quite a long while, so I'm going to go over what we, what happened in more detail than usual last time. Uh, last time we started on the um on the PC version exclusive route zeroing Rebel. It began with um. Yuna at the end of Roots um, D falling unconscious after getting shot, and then her having a flashback to the first game she went through a year before. In that year before, um, she woke up at the game and met up with Akira Makioka, um, who is, um, as we know from the main game, um, Ray's twin brother. And um, they went to the briefing together and met up with three other players, um, Kishin, Kind of a laid back young gu young man, um, Ego, a um, middle aged self proclaimed detective, and Sophia, a um, a girl originally from Mexico who has a very limited grasp of Japanese. Um, then they at there there's there's a bit of tension at first, but uh, thanks to Akira's um, friendly attitude and general naivety and obliviousness. Um, Managed to break the ice between all three of them. Although Yuna, unlike her main story counterpart, is much more suspicious in the past than she is than the person she is now. And then they all went over their new uh, their um, clear conditions and special functions. And since um, these are new functions exclusive to this story and not part of the main game, I'll go over it all of them once more. Yuna is the ace. Her clear condition is to spend three or more hours traveling to at least one other player, but this condition only begins after the briefing. While well, her special function was to remotely view a designated player's PDA screen within 300 meters, but this could only be done once per minute and 13 times total during the whole game. Akira was the jack. His clear condition was that all players with player numbers that aren't numbers fulfill their clear conditions. In other words, the ace, jack, queen, king, and joker. And his special function was show a list of all players' injuries. However, this can only be used once every three hours. Ego's clear condition was to... Um, Discharge a firearm every six hours starting from the second day. While well, a special function was to swap the clear conditions of multiple PDAs in one meter. He can pick the PDAs in question on the input screen, but he cannot select his own PDA. Then we have um, Kishin, um, who was the seven. His clear condition is to acquire the Joker PDA, and his special function is to revert the Joker PDA within 50 meters to its initial settings. Last, Sophia is the queen. Her clear condition is four other players. Um, she has traveled with for over 12 hours to fill their clear conditions, while her special function is to show undiscovered cubes within 10 meters on the map. And so the group set out and um, went to look for, um, search for mainly a gun for Ego and the Joker, um, so um, some of them could, so that um, Kishi and Akira could fill their clear conditions. And um, they found, using Sophia's special function, they managed to find a gun relatively quickly, although uh, Ego um, gave the gun itself to Yuna and gave the magazine to um, Akira when Yuna didn't trust him with the gun. In the meantime, um, um, Sophia was very protective of her own food because it was likely she grew up in poverty in Mexico, but um, thanks to Akira breaking the ice, he managed to gain her trust and um, it's basically just... Um, Make things easier on all of them, although Yuna was still doubtful as ever. And um, they didn't, ultimately didn't end up finding the Joker owner. And so they went to bed for a night. But then at, at, at night, um, Yuna and Akira caught um, Ego sneaking out to the village where he seemed to be looking for something and writing in a notebook. So then um, Akira. Um, and Yuna went out and confronted him, and while he refused to show what was on the notepad first, there was suddenly a gunfight. Um, they heard sounds of a gunfight, and so um, Ego took the gun and armed it when Yuna couldn't do so. And, but unfortunately, the gunfight had nothing to do with them and passed right by them. 
And through this, um, Ego finally gained Yuna's trust when he told him that her his plan was to see if there was a way. He suspects there's a way that they could um, survive without having to play the game, but he's not sure yet. So he's trying to keep it to himself so that the um, players wouldn't get pe- the other players wouldn't get penalized if he if it turns out that he get penalized for that. And so he, Yuna, he earned um, Ego earned Yuna's trust, and she also, Aki also earned her trust. And so she asked Ego to teach her how to fire a gun. And the last scene before he left off at the end of the first day was some woman in the forest who was ta- was bound and gagged um, completely on her own. And that's where we left off, so we're going to pick up there. All right? Sorry for the long introduction. Just thought me a little bit of more extra time because of how long it's been. So here we go. Day two. It was the second morning of the game. Yuna, who was the first of the group to wake up, stretched her limbs out to the sky since her be- since her body was all stiff from having slept on the hardwood floor in a bundle. <sighs> At least the weather looks nice. Ooh, I feel like a million bucks now. It wasn't it wasn't long until the other members came out one after another. Oh, Yuna. Oh, Yuna. Good morning. Yeah, morning. Uh, ow. My body's killing me all over. Hey, old man, you're back, okay? This is nothing compared to a stakeout. Sophia, alright, too? Uh, Sophia used to this, so fine. Which means Kishin's the only one here complaining, eh? <laughs> Got me there. Oh wait, that's right, Ego. Don't need to fire your first shot or it'll be game over for you? Yeah, I know. Yuna, lend me the gun. Yuna said that and held the gun, oh, took the gun at her waist down and held it out to Ego. The time was 5.53. Um, Eagle's clear condition was to fire a gun at least once every six hours starting on the sixth day. There was only ten more minutes until his time limit ran There was less than ten minutes until his time limit ran out. Just then, Kishin spoke out as I realized something. Huh? You know, since when, since when were you on such good terms with the old man? Aren't you guys on the rocks yesterday? Oh, you see. What happened between them um, last night? A lot? Yep. Well, my lips are sealed on any more than that. Eh, that's Oh come on, Akira! Don't be a spoil sport. Saying that's only gonna make me more curious. Don't you agree, Sophia? Uh, Sophia, no really care. Huh? Oh, really? Taku Akira no yatsu. Okay, sheesh. I thought I told you not to talk about yesterday. No helping him. That guy's br- that guy is as airheaded as a balloon. 
Anyway, there's only six minutes left. I know, I know. Ego shrugged. Um, pulled the slide of the gun. Put his finger on the trigger. And fired a bullet into the sky. And with that gunshot as a signal, the, the team of five began the second day of the game. Afterwards, the group used the memory chips they'd gone the day before to get um to get their break to look for breakfast. And when they got to the third um supply um supply spot um the group found two pistols, a Beretta M92F. It was the world's most famous pistol, used by police and militaries all over the world. And much like the day before, um, the group all sat in a circle and ate together. Ate breakfast together. Nina went off with Ego in the corner of the woods so he could teach her how to use a gun like he promised the day before. Yeah. So, which gun are you going to go with? Hmm. Hold on one second. Oh, no, sorry. They didn't find two guns earlier. I meant they found their second gun. Sorry about that. Yeah, I think I'll go with this Beretta. It feels like it oh, fits better in my hand. Meaning I'll stick with the P228? Oh, ah, shoot. Ah, sorry. Ah, I forgot. I did it again. Anyway, here we go. Well, there's not much difference in how you handle them anyway. That won't, be, that won't, be, that won't pose any problems with teaching you. Alright then, let's start with the basics. And so, with Ego's lecture, Yuna learns how to handle... Uh, um... Learns how a gun was composed, and how to handle it. Next was how to grip the pistol. And that followed by how to aim your sights. Anyway, the basic idea is to stay still when you fire. If you try moving, you won't be able to hit your target. That's for how to fire. Um... You wind your legs at shoulder length, move your left leg half a step forward, um, and put your weight into your into the big toes of both feet. Then bend your knees so you're ready to move any time, and then bring the gun to your to the center of your body. Like this? Yuna did as, um, Yuna held the gun as Ego taught her. So, that's the style of Hold on one second. Alright, sorry, here we go. So, 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 so,
Right. That's the isosceles style. That's the kind I learned at, in, at, at police school. I see. But Ego, don't you think the style leaves your body too exposed to your opponent? True. It's a kind of it's the kind of um it's the kind of shooting style they use in the Japanese police precisely because there's so few gun actual gunfights. I see. What, you don't like it? Then how about I teach you one more style? What's it like? It's called the Weaver style. They use it a lot in the USA. It's like they have this like you put your left leg forward, and then um, bring your um, left half of your body out so it's facing your target. While you hold that stance, reach your right arm out, and hold your gun out um, at eye level. Next, um, bend your left arm. And put and put squeeze it towards your armpit, and put your left um hand on top of your right. This way, you expose less of your body than you do in the isosceles style. I see. So like this, basically. Hmm. Good form. Thanks. I think I like this better myself, too. Good. And try firing shots. As for your target, aim for that tree trunk over there. Got it. That one, right? Alright then. Um, turn off the safety and lower the and lower the pistol. Okay. Got it. You know, took a deep breath. Um. Um. And lines her eyes up with the gun's rear and front sights. Her target was approximately 15 meters away. Good. Pull the trigger. <laughs> Gunpowder then exploded with a shock wave after she um after she squeezed the the hard metal trigger of her with her index finger, the vibration shaking all the way into her shoulders. The air was filled with the smell of gunpowder. Though Yuna's shot was a bit more off to the left than she'd aimed it. She still managed to hit the tree trunk dead on. Just then, Akira and the others who've been watching over them start clapping. That was amazing, Yuna! Had the birth of, of a woman gunslinger here? Uh. Gunslinger? Hey, come on, don't flatter me. That was just dumb luck right now. Isn't that right, Ego? Hmm, no, you're pretty good, I have to say. Um, not many people can hit the first, can hit the target on their first try. Really? No need to be modest. You've got a talent for guns. 
It's important for you to be able to accurately acknowledge your own skills. Abilities. But what, you, but what you need to make sure you don't get the wrong idea about is that this right now is just the basic of the basics. It's likely that during an actual battle, you won't have you won't be getting all the time in the world to line up your shots like that. Yeah, guess you're right. Not guess, definitely. Listen to me, Yuna. In the off chance you have to end, you end up having to shoot someone, get as close to him as possible and aim for the torso. Yeah, then fire as many bullets as you can. Otherwise, um, consider yourself dead. Hey, old man, don't you think that's kind of, uh, how do I put this? A little dangerous? Dumbass. We're all just amateurs here. Hell, I'm a detective. Not even I haven't gone to a single gunfight. That's why if the chips are down, you need to go for the most efficient method there is. Oh, there you go. Oh no, Akira. Don't make that face. It's not like I want to kill anyone, you know. But we need to be prepared for the possibility. Oh, no, we need to be prepared for the possibility. You're right. You follow me, Yuna? I'm not saying you need to get ready right now, or have the same, or have the same sort of resolve as I do, but. Yeah, that's true. Think about it. The point is that we don't have all the time in the world to think about it. Just keep that in mind. Yes, I understand. You look down at the gun she was holding with a pensive face. She became aware of the weight in her hands. Just then, Sophia, who'd been quiet up until now, um, tugged on Ego's sleeve a few times. Nanda, Sophia. Hmm? What is it, Sophia? Uh, Ego, Sophia wants gun too. Huh? Sophia wants gun too. Hey, were you actually listening to what I said? Ha,聞いてたかどうかはあまり重要じゃないんじゃないかな。I don't think it's really all that important whether she did or not, right? I mean, this is Sophia we're talking about here. Oh, right. Sophia doesn't understand. Ego, Sophia, shoot gun. So, Sophia, hold on to what you have. There's no way in hell I can do that. This isn't a kid's toy. But you not have one. I mean, yeah, but that's not the point. Right, Kishin? Yeah, that's right. Yuna's Yuna has her head in the right place, so it's actually it's actually a relief to let her have a gun. 
But Sophia can shoot gun. Yet Yuna only one who has gun. Don't you think that's strange, Akira? Sophia stared at Akira's face. She was probably expecting Akira to sympathize with her. But Akira just shook his head. It's alright, Sophia. If it ever comes down to it, I'm sure Yuna and Ego will protect you. But... Yuna, Ego, you really protect Sophia? Sophia asked that with an almost pleading look in her eyes. Yuna grew more and more conscious of the way of the gun in her hands. Yes, I promise. Yeah, me too. I promise too, of course. All right. Sophia will trust you too. Huh? You two? What about me? Uh, Kishin have nothing, so no reason to trust. <laughs> you sure are pragmatic, Sophia. なあ、おっさん。物は相談なんだけど、おっさんが持ってる銃を俺に預けてみない? Hey old man. Think how about think about maybe lending me the gun for a second? あ、お前まで何言ってんだ。ん?って話がに言うな。だってマルゴシのままだとソフィアちゃんが俺のことを認めてくれないんだもん。だってファイスタイアンアームソフィアウィルネバーアクノロージメ。あのな。スウェア。
just to be safe, A go use the special function. Unfortunately, the Joker wasn't amongst them. After that, Akira asked them if they wanted to join them. However, since that group had been attacked by other players, they turned down their offer and went off and left to go off somewhere. The group managed to find a mountain cabin before nightfall and gathered there to have another um, late dinner afterwards. Yuna left the mountain cabin and um, looked at the forest. The chilly night breeze um, Sway the shadows of the um, of the trees, um, faint shadows in the moonlight. And every time they sw the shadows swayed heavily, um, Yuna realized that she'd been a little, she'd been her body had been tense for a while now. If that shadow were an attacker, could she bring herself to point a gun at them and pull the trigger? The moment she she pondered that question, um, she felt the weight of the gun in her waist grow even more. Just then, she heard someone's footsteps coming from within the mound cabin. Is it Akia? boy's face popped into Yuna's head as she listened to those footsteps. Well, the one who came out the door was... Oh, it's just you, Kishin. Oh? Did you think I was Akira? Huh? Uh, no! That's not why! Ha ha ha! You're so cute when you get all flustered like that. Hey! What do you want, Kishin? Did you just come here to make fun of me? No, you got the wrong idea, Yuna. Maybe I don't look like it, but I came here because I was worried about you. Huh? I've had a gloomy look on your face ever since we we part we part ways with that group of three, you know. So I was wondering what was up. Oh, so you noticed? Yeah. So what's up? If you don't mind me, I'm up, I'm up, I'm, I, I, sorry. Um, if you don't mind me, I'm willing to lend ear to you if you want to vent. Kishin quietly looked at Yuna's face. Yuna has to say a word, she should talk about her fears, but... When she remembered that he too was her ally, she decided to be honest with him. Hey, Kishin. How do you think this game is going to go after this? Hmm? What do you mean by that? Well, I know it's odd for me to be saying it's why I'm the one who caused the most strife to begin with. But we've got, but, we, but we all of us have gone along quite well after these, just these two days, right? Hey, 
Ego is mature no matter what he says, and he's a good leader who keeps his who keeps a good who keeps his mind on everyone. I gotta admit, at first I thought you were kind of... You're kind of just an idiot who fool around. You're actually a good mood maker who keeps the peace. <laughs> I'm honored. Sophia,まあ正直今でもよくわかんないけど、余計なことはしないし。as for Sophia, well, okay, honestly, I don't really know much about her, but she doesn't step out of line, and she seems really attached to Akira. Sophia's probably right next to Akira, even as they spoke. Incidentally, it was Sophia who also slept next to Akira the night before. Oh? Are you jealous? No, that's not it! <laughs> my bad, my bad. So? Right. Anyway, the five of us are traveling together as comrades right now. And now that I've been entrusted with a gun, I want to protect all of you, too. But... But what? And I consider the idea of all of us just... clearing the game, um, without any... without any fur, without any, um, injuries or anything. I just get all worried all of a sudden. Is that because you heard about how those three were attacked? Yuna silently nodded. But, there, but that wasn't the only reason she was worried. Ego had said this game was a show for those with sick pleasures. Um satisfy those desires and if that were the case um and what their group was doing right now could not have been what those people wanted perhaps the administrators had planned for something for them in the future Even today, Ego would try to do what he could whenever he had time on his own. But he was in just as risk as much as Yuna was. Well, this whole game isn't just no matter how you spin, anyhow. Even I'm worried about how this is all gonna end. But well, I believe we still have hope. Huh? In all honesty, I was planning on going on going off on my own once the uh, briefing ended. You called me a mood maker. I'm actually quite the calculating type. So I saw what a good mood you and the others had going on at the time. I got I I panicked a little bit. You see, I have a dream. A dream I want to make come true no matter what. So I don't want to get caught up in one of your schemes and die because of this. But it's because of this. But thanks to a certain someone, um, 
That plan no longer ma- no, Something no longer mattered to me part way through. That's why I decided to keep on traveling with you guys. And now here we are, trying to complete the game together. I don't think you understand, but that's quite a miracle for me. That's why I'm sure there's there, we have hope. Okay, so don't be so pessimistic, okay, Yuna? You're right. Well, if that's the case, then don't you think Akira's whole pampered, spoiled, rich kid, um, adds, um, attitude, um, isn't foolproof either? <laughs> Yuna-chan te aikawarazu Akira-kun ni wa kibishi yo ne. I see yours is harsh on Akira as ever. Datte aitsu, jotto tayori nai janai. Well, I mean, he's not exactly the, the most reliable tool in the shed, you know? So? Think so? Ore wa Akira-kun te sugoi to omou yo. Personally, I think he's amazing. If it weren't for him, I'm sure we wouldn't be traveling together like we are now. You know, you know that too, don't you, Yuna? Yeah. Well, I guess I'll, well, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Yuna and Kishin smiled at each other. Just then, they heard more footsteps coming from the mountain cabin. Well, look here, Yuna. The prince has shown up. Huh? Kishin, what do you think you're saying? You could learn, you could learn a lesson in honesty, you know that, Yuna? Well... I don't want to be a third wheel, so off I go. Kishin gave a little wave to Yuna. And he passed by the confused Akira and went back into the cabin all by himself. Only Yuna and Akira were left. Just then, Yuna was suddenly struck by a strange, by a mysterious tension. Uh, Yuna? Is this a bad time? What do you mean? Well, I, uh, I thought maybe I was interrupting something between you two. Oh, that's what you meant. Eh, it's fine, forget him. Knowing him, he's just gonna be off having fun all by himself anyhow. So anyway, what's up? You have so you need something from me? No, not really. Hold on a sec. Yuna gave Akira's face a puzzled look when she saw him being unusually, um, evasive. Just then, 
As if trying to cover himself up, Akira. The moon sure is beautiful tonight, isn't it, Yuna? Wait, what? Go on, you take a look too, Yuna. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yuna had no idea why he suddenly said that. But she decided to do as he said and looked up at the sky. A brilliant starry sky and the giant moon, both shining brightly down on them, hung up high. Hey. Wow. You're right, the moon is quite beautiful. Hey. Yeah. There aren't all these, these lights around like there are in the city. So you can see the sky so clearly here. Moon's like something t t totally different from the moon we usually see. You're right about that. Now that I think about it. This might be the first time I've looked up at the night sky ever since we started this game. That was probably because she didn't have the the ease the presence of mind she did now. She'd been looking at nothing but the tree shadows up until now. She definitely hadn't even noticed that. So that mean Akira had um nosed had caught off on that and gone out to make sure she looked up at the sky too. She looked to the side as she thought that as Akira looked. Spoke while looking up at the sky. Hey Yuna, you think the other players looking at this moon too? Other players? You mean the three you met today? Yes. 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 And the other players we haven't met yet. Hope we can all get out of this game alive. You're unbelievable. I swear, you're probably the only player among us who's thinking like that right now. Huh? Really? Yep, I'm sure of it. This guy really does have his head in the clouds. But just as Kishin had said, it was thanks to Akira was the glue that that brought the whole group together. Yuna suddenly stole a glance at his face. Though he had gentle feminine features, um, his eyes, illuminated by the moonlight, um, did indeed have a manly aura to them. Yuna's heart trembled when she noticed that. Her mouth suddenly started moving on its own. So, uh, hey, you... Yes? Um, well, uh... Do you, um, have a girlfriend? Huh? 
Uh, never mind. Um, forget all about that. Huh? I'm telling you, just forget about all that, okay? Come on, erase it from your memories right now. Come on, do it. Uh, what? What's with you? Didn't you say your, your sister was good at that sort of thing? You're you got almost the same DNA, so soon you'll be able to do the same thing? What are you getting all angry for, Yuna? Shut up! Your face is all red. Do you have a fever or something? Ah, uh, shut up! Yeah, um... Uh... Uh, I told you to shut up already! So what the hell was she even saying? Nina felt like her heart was going to burst from embarrassment. As she mumbled to herself and kept shouting. And so Akira reeled in bewilderment as Yuna rambled on, as the moon quietly shone on. And then, just as the second day of the game was coming to a close, The woman faintly regained consciousness, but as she was blindfolded, she couldn't see a thing. The situation hadn't changed at all since yesterday. She couldn't speak, see, or move, and she hadn't gotten any water, food, or proper sleep. Since she'd been um, tied to the tree this whole time, um, her whole body ached and was hurting. Sometimes she just wished she could just fall asleep forever. And if, and if no help was going to come for her, then she'd rather just die. The woman had already lost hope. And just um and just start and just um thought to herself with a resigned look on her face. Just then the woman heard something rustling rustling through the um trees. Something was approaching her. It had been, it had to be the one who tied her up. They'd finally come back to kill her. The woman trembled with that fear, her body shaking against the tree. The sounds grew even closer. Huh? Is someone there? Huh? Is someone tied up? It's not the one who did this to me? Once the woman realized after hearing the, the man's reactions, um, she immediately started twisting her body and spoke up. <laughs> Wait right there! I'll get those ropes off of you! The man circled around to the back of the tree, um, and just... Um, the woman could tell she was desperately trying to untie her. Now she would be saved. This two-day nightmare would finally end. 
The woman shed tears of relief and waited for a time of release. However... When the world happened? The woman clearly heard an unnatural sound. When she came to her senses, she realized that the sensation of her ropes being undone had stopped. And she heard a single breath behind her. Was it the man from before? Was it the man from before? No, something felt different. The moment she thought that, the woman's tears of joy immediately dried up. Before long, the one behind her circled around the tree and approached her. They were taking their time for every single step, as if the as if she, they're trying to make her feel every sing, hear every single one of them. There's no doubt about it. It was the one who tied her up. When she was sure of that, um, the woman mustered her remaining strength and desperately struggled. This kept up. She'd get. She'd be killed. No, she didn't want to die. Tears of fear came from her eyes this time. Culprit stopped right in front of her. They got even closer to her, and she felt their breath on her face. She felt something softly pressed against her side. And then an instant later... <coughs> the woman screamed fruitlessly as something slid between her ribs. She'd been stabbed right in the side. Her whole body trembled with intense pain. Yet she was still conscious. Her consciousness uh, um, was wrung to its limits by that um, intense agony. The culprit then removed um, the blade from the woman's side. That would have been too close. But this is good. The culprit probably said something like that. But amidst her in the intense pain, the woman could no longer have the sense of mind to make out his voice. Their voice. And then the culprit left the woman. Before long... She heard the sound of something being dragged. The woman no longer even the strength to moan properly. Blood oozed out of the wound on her side with, with a burning pain. Why is this happening to me? But all the woman could do now was pray that her death would come as soon as possible so that she would be released from this hellish agony as soon as she could. Day three. That alarm rang just when Yuna was about to get up from her sleep. Ominous words reached her ears. The stage has been ranked up due to a player's death. 
The game will now begin. Enter second stage. Your clear conditions have been updated. All players, um, please check your personal data. What? Second stage? Nina got a bad feeling of those unfamiliar words and immediately sprung up. Akira tried to get up at almost the exact same. Akira got up at the almost exact same time. Yeah, what was that? I don't know. Let's just check our PDAs for now. Right. Sophia, please wake up. What wrong, Akira? It's morning already? Sophia, please check your PDA right away. It seems something happened. Uh, okay. But, what happened to Ego and Kishin? Huh? Now you mention it, I don't see him anywhere. Yuna frankly looked around after she heard that. But just as they'd said, um, Ego and Kishin were nowhere to be found. Perhaps Ego had gone up early and, um, gone to look into and gone to try to find a way they could escape. They could get through this without having to fill their clear conditions. But she had no idea what Kishin would be doing away. Yuna, should I go look? No, checking your PDAs comes first. Yuna took out her PDA and immediately opened it up her, to her personal data. When she did, what she found Rin there was. Personal data. Yuna Toto, player number ace. Clear condition. Um. Kill a player you spent three or more hours traveling with by your with your own hands. What the hell is this? It wasn't before long that Akira and Sophia checked their own um, personal data, and then... <laughs> it was likely that the both of them had also had... Um, Also had clear conditions that um had grown far more dangerous. Just then, they heard someone running from outside. Kishin flung open the door and ran in with a bloodshot face. I'm oh, sorry, with a pale face. Hey guys, have you already checked your PDAs? Kishin. Where were you? Hang on a second. Sorry, okay, back. I was taking care of business! Anyway, have you checked your PDAs yet? Yes, we already checked them. But what's going on here? What's this second stage stuff about? Don't ask me. I got no idea either. Anyway, 
Anyway, this means one of the players has died and the game's rules have changed, right? What the player do is that the player who has been given the message is not going to be a Us players have no choice but to take the messages we receive from the administrators at face value. Uh, uh, then we have no choice but to fulfill um, clear new rules. Well, uh... Wait, Sophia. It's too early to come to that conclusion. If they accepted the new rules, then Yuna would have to kill someone. Someone here. That was why she couldn't afford to accept it, no matter what. Yes, Yuna's right. Kishin, do you know where Ego went? He was gone by the time we woke up. No, he was gone too by the time I woke up as well. Uh, could he be the one who got killed? Just wait. My language. Hold on a second. I'll try using my special function to see if Ego's around at least. Yes, player number King. Ego's somewhere within 300 meters of this cabin. Thank God. Yeah. In that case, all we can do is wait for him to come back, huh? Yes, I agree with that. I'm all for that too. We can talk about the new, the new clear conditions after that. You're okay with that too, aren't you, Sophia? Uh... All right. Don't worry, Sophia. Um, if the old man's all right, I'm sure we will be too. After all, the old man's a detective. I'm sure he's coming up with a, with a plan of action even as we speak. Yes, you're right. Once Ego got back, it'd be best for him to talk to Kishin and Sophia about there being a way to get out of this apart from fulfilling their clear conditions. She felt bad since Ego said he didn't want to get young young people involved. Um, but this no longer was a sort of situation where he could be, afford to be stubborn like that. Of course, there was the possibility that the Administrators have planned something, but even so, um, playing into their hands was the last thing, um, you know, wanted right now. Plus, if they all work together, perhaps they could get this over with faster than they thought. Before long, they heard footsteps approaching the cabin. Looks like he's back. But, doesn't something seem odd about those footsteps? Huh? What do you mean? Well, I mean, it sounds like whoever it is is staggering. Don't tell me the old man was wounded or something. Kishin said that and quick immediately ran out 
outside the cabin. You and the others quickly followed suit. You're late, old man. What have you been doing up until now? <laughs> there was something odd about Ego's reaction. But Kishin just continued to speak to him in a concerned voice as he approached him. What's wrong, old man? Your face is pale. Did you get hurt or something? Here, let me give you, lend me your, let me, let me lend you my shoulder. Kishin said that and reached his hand out to Ego. At that moment, Ego's expression changed. His eyes filled with strength, and his face warped as if it were a demon's. No, Kishin! <laughs> Kishin's body sprung and trembled every time the gu a gunshot rang out. White smoke rose on the outer side of his body. The others weren't able to say anything. They just stared wide-eyed as they watched the scene unfold. For long, Kishin's legs went limp. The old man, why? Are you kidding me? You know, mother and dumb, dumbfoundedly. And she desperately tried to find something, anything, um, to deny the sequence of events that just unfolded. It was Kishin collapsed onto the ground. There was the P228 clutched in Ego's hands. There was a white smoke trailing from the gun's muzzle. And the scent of gunpowder flying, flying around them. But none of them could deny the reality that unfolded before them. Hold on a second. Alright, back. Um, and then Ego's exhausted but bloodshot eyes turned to Yuna and the others. Ego, why? Well, that only figures. Eagle's voice sounded like a completely different person altogether. You couldn't understand the wry smile that his lips warped into. Just then, Sophia finally opened her mouth. Hold him. Eagle killed Kishin! Sophia turned up, um, screamed as she turned around and ran away. The moment she saw that, fear well within Yuna's heart. And then, as if it's a chain reaction. <laughs> Sophia! Yuna! Wait, guys!
Ego's dumbfounded voice was quickly followed by, um, um, Akira's footsteps chasing after Yuna. But Yuna had no intention of stopping or turning around. All she could think about was getting as far away from Ego as soon as possible as she ran through the woods. Right after that, a bullet whizzed by her ear. Right after that, Damn it! Die! She has to turn around to know that he that Ego was shooting. Ego's bloodlust approached um with the violent um gales blasting by her. Nina desperately grit her teeth. She felt like she'd burst out into tears if she didn't. Why? Why? The second stage had finally begun. You know, say with the full um, force of that um, fact, as she can, as all she could do was just desperately run through the woods. After running for who knows how long, Yuna finally stopped and panted. But her wildly racing heart wouldn't calm down. If anything, it only pounds stronger um, when, that, when she um, thought back to the events that had just unfolded. It was true that Yuna hadn't completely trusted Ego at first. Thanks to that, she had almost been isolated from the other members. But after the events of that night, she had come to acknowledge Ego as their leader. Until just a few minutes ago, she'd wholeheartedly relied on him. And yet... So, so what the hell is this? Ego, didn't you say you were a detective? Didn't you say you didn't want to get kids like us caught up over the whims of a stubborn old man like you? So, why did you kill Kishin? It was likely that Ego's clear condition had changed to something that involved killing Yuna and the others once the um, second stage had begun. But still, did that mean he could just simply um, shoot his comrades as if nothing had happened? Yuna couldn't bring herself to believe it. Did he value his life more than his pride? Or is or his eyes been clouded by the by the prize for winning the game ever since the start? Whatever the reasons, it didn't change the fact that um Kishin uh, Ego had shot Kishin dead. Ego decided to play this game, that this killing game that the um, administrators have put together. And had chosen the path of surviving this game, even if it meant killing his comrades.
And there were probably and there were surely other players who make who make the same decision as him. Yuna grew angry when she thought that. Um I'm sorry, Yuna grew scared when she thought that. Um, and took out her PDA to check if there were any players around. But just as she tried to activate her special function. <laughs> Yuna bent back instinctively when she heard a sound. And saw something sharp, um, pass over her head and stick into the- deep into the tree nearby. Took a look to find it was a small. It was a short arrow. So I missed, huh? Someone was hiding. Was in, in the thickets, and they and they had a clear intent to kill. <laughs> Yuna quickly fled behind the tree so that the, um he couldn't aim the second air a second shot. <laughs> It's pointless to hide. I have no, I have no intention of letting you get away. Who are you? Show yourself. Hate to bring it to you, but I've got no guarantee that you don't have a weapon. Then get lost already. Just so you know, I have a gun! Yuna quickly drew her pistol. She then removed the safety and pointed in the direction of the voice. Well, well, a Beretta, huh? So they got stuff like that around here, too. Now hurry up and get lost! Otherwise, I won't show you any mercy. Do you know your way around the Beretta? You've never shot a person before, have you? And look, I don't know who taught you, but you did a half ass job of removing that safety. Huh? That can't be. You know, looked um looked at her hands when she thought that. Just then, her opponent suddenly moved again to move. And a moment later, you no longer no longer knew where to aim. Suddenly. Just when she thought his footsteps had vanished. That man came rushing from a completely different direction than where Yuna had been aiming. <laughs> Yuna quickly tried to point her gun at him. But that man garbed in um camouf in military camouflage already um was already pointing his crossbow at Yuna's chest. No, I won't make it in time. Just as Yuna got ready to, was ready to die. No. What something swiped away the crossbow arrow. You look to find a familiar boy standing there. <laughs> Yuna, are you alright? <laughs> was that? Akira's holding a, a branch he picked off the ground. But Yuna wasn't the only one surprised by that. <laughs> You're insane? You blocked my arrow with a stick like that? Excuse me, 
Two against one isn't good odds for me. You live you live to fight in our day this time. I'll retreat for now. The man said that um and turned around and vanished into the um bushes. The only ones that were left were Yuna, Akira, and the and the cro and the crossbow arrow then fired. Just then, Akira threw away the stick and spoke. That sure was a close call, wasn't it, Yuna? Akira, why? I'm sorry. I chased after you as soon as I could, but I lost sight of you. No, it's not what I mean. Huh? What, do you think I won't betray you like Ego? I ha Did you forget I have a gun right now? So why? Why would you come up to me so defenseless? For all you know, I might kill you to fulfill my own clear condition. You know, you know that? Yes, that's true. So that's true. Well, if I thought along those lines, I don't think I could have saved you. What the hell? How long are you planning to keep your head up in the clouds? Do you understand what's going on right now? Ego shot Kishin dead the moment the second stage began. So why are you... Why was Nakia wor uh, wary of the possibility of a, of a comrade betraying him? Why wasn't he scared that he might be a target too? Yuna hadn't even let go of the gun she um the gun she'd been holding, and yet. Just then, Yuna felt awful at herself for going off at Akira like that. She thought she'd gone stronger from living on her own after her parents had died, but... When Yuna came to her senses, um... Akira was staring at her. She found Akira staring at her with concern. Um, the expression suggested that he didn't know what he should do. I'm sorry. I should have said all of that to you when you saved my life. Scum. No, that's not true, Yuna. Huh? I left everything up to you and Ego. Up until now, I thought that was okay. I thought things would turn out this way. If I actually thought about it, it might have been something I could have done, and yet... Yuna, I used my special functions now, and checked all the players' injuries. Yuna, 
And I did. It said that players number two and seven were dead. The two was probably the one who kicked off the second stage. And seven is Kishin. I see. Then that means. Yes. Kishin's death. Sarkishin had died. You and Akira would never hear that silly yet cheerful voice of his, laughter of his ever again. For long, a still breeze ran through the woods. The trees stood quiet as if though they were lamenting something. You can listen to that. Um. As she wondered about what they were going to do now. Just then, Akira took another look at Yuna. Yuna -san, what? I'm planning to go look for Sophia. I see. Sophia, are you sure? No, that's come to this. Sophia might try to kill you too. I know, but I'm still worried about her. I don't know for sure that Sophia's clear condition conflicts with ours. See, I swear you never change no matter what happens, huh? Yuna broke out into a self deprecating smile. It wasn't something she thought she, she, didn't, she didn't think she could ever do something like him. Hey, Yuna. Hmm? Will you come with me? Huh? I mean, she promised to protect Sophia, right? The so Akira's tone was, um, was kind. His words had a harsh, almost reprimanding tone, um, implication to them. There was a crushing pressure behind them. But Yuna felt there was something precious behind that, in that pressure. Um, that she had almost lost. And it was something she knew she didn't want to lose from the bottom of her heart. Alright, I got it. Let me come with you. After that, Yuna and Akira walked around the field, looking for Sophia, taking care to look out for any other player attacks. However, time passed without them finding a single trace of Sophia. For long, the sun was already setting. Yuna and Akira found a found a terrible corpse in the forest. It's closed. There. Hold on a second.
though Yuna almost couldn't believe what she'd seen. She checked the body again to find that, um, the one who, um, the one all bloody, um, the one all caught up and bloodied with wounds over his body, um, was none other than the man, the man in the military uniform who attacked Yuna just a few hours before. This game's getting worse and worse, isn't it? As Yuna and Akira were able to check the state of the player's injuries every three hours thanks to Akira's special function, they could see from the text on they could they had seen from the text on the PDF until now just how fast this killing game had been accelerating. And four players had already died. The four and the nine had now joined the list of the dead. They didn't know which one he was since his PDA had been stolen, but the man in the military uniform had definitely been one of them. Perhaps, um... Perhaps this game had gone too far to turn back now. Yuna couldn't help but fall into that spiral of negativity. When faced with that gruesome corpse. Let's go, Yuna. It'll be dangerous to move around once it gets dark. Um, let's find somewhere to rest for now. Yeah, I know. And so the two of them started walking. Neither of them said a word. Only their footsteps echoed through the forest. Yuna suddenly got curious and stole a glance at Akira's face. His face oozed with a lament of, um, being faced with that stranger's death. And the same sense of, um, self-blame that he, um... They had it for the last few hours. But once Yuna realized she would never be calm unless she could tell that um, the expressions in Akira's face weren't a lie, she started falling into another cycle of self loathing again. And then, the third night of the game arrived. Now the second stage has started. All, most of the players, afraid of the dark, would probably hold up in wherever they could find a rest. Amongst them were um, players who walked in mist at darkness, um, tripping on tree roots from time to time. Damn it! Where the hell did they go? He cursed as he violently wiped away tree leaves that had brushed his face. Ever since then, Ego had been looking for his, the three who'd run away, constantly traveling around the field. But he hadn't accomplished anything even after all this time. Damn it. It's be so much more easier if I could use her if I could use the girl's special function.
Eggo Zone's special function. To switch uh, multiple PD um, multiple PDA's clear conditions within one meter was totally useless. He wasn't having any trouble with his new clear condition for now. But he didn't know if that would still hold true tomorrow. What's more, he was hungry. Since they've been relying on... Since he'd been relying on Sophia's special function to find cubes up until now... He hadn't learned any tricks on finding cubes by himself. And since he used up most of his bullets, he barely had any left. Nothing was going well for him. The more he thought that, the more bloodlust began welling in his chest. God damn it. I swear I'll kill you once I find you. Ego looked around when he said that. But the one he was looking for wasn't there. His eyes merely reflected the moonlight as they glared into the darkness. Day four. It was the second morning since the second stage had begun. Yu and Akira left the hut they've been, stay they've been staying in for the night um, and made conversation as they quickly began the search for Sophia. I hope we can find her soon. Yeah. What I could see when I used my special function just now, Sophia hasn't been hurt, but... The two kept a close eye around them as they walked around as they walked to the areas and checked the day before. But an uncomfortable awkwardness hung between them. They knew why that was, of course. Yuna's clear condition was to kill um, one of the players that she traveled with for more than three hours with her own hands. Oops. Okay, there we go. And depending on how things turned out, there was a very possible danger that... Um, that someone would have to be here, Akira or Sophia. What's more, Yuna hadn't revealed this to Akira yet. But it wasn't just her. Oh, Akira hadn't said anything about his own update clear condition until now either. Even though he he would have been the first person to reveal his person. So even though he had been the first one to reveal his personal data first and foremost on the first day. And so the two kept going through the forest without making any conversation. They heard the sound of water flowing from somewhere. Yuna, -san. Asoko. Yuna look. They found a small waterfall. 
Next to it was a was a tiny cave. Hold on a sec. Feels like the right sort of place, don't you think? Yes. And there are signs around here of someone having moved to the bushes. Which means someone's taking up camp there? Yes. And judging from the positions of the of the of the greenery that's been brushed away, whoever this is isn't that tall. I see. There was only one player who came to mind when you thought of a of a small player. Mina quickly took out her PDA and used her function that only had five more uses left in it. And she did. Um. The player selection screen appeared. Please select a player number. Jack. Queen. Akira was the Jack, and the Queen was... Let's go, Akira. Sophia might be there. They didn't know Sophia was there, but just in case she was, they made as little noise as possible and headed toward the cave so they wouldn't provoke her. And once they stood in front of the cave, Akira, who had been the most friendly of the group, called out um, into it. Sophia! It's Akia. Are you there? Sophia san. Moshi naka ni irashai mashita ra henji o onegai shimasu. Sophia, please answer me if you're in there. Henji ga nai da koro ka mono oto hitotsu shinai wa ne. Forget an answer. There's not even a sound, is there? Yeah. Hito no kehai mo kanji rare masen. Yes. I can't sense anyone either. What do we do? Let's go to the cave. Let's check the cave. Let's go in just to be safe. Yes. 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 What they found there was... What the... They arrived at, um, at the dead end of the cave. There were traces of a campfire there. As well as, um... A mess of can of empty ca um, cans and plastic bottles that appear to have been food supplies. Well, it wasn't the amount of um, food that surprised them, but rather the fact that there are all sorts of weapons gathered near the food. In addition to firearms such as pistols and shotguns, they also found a Japanese sword. Um, they also found blades like a Japanese sword 
Now Liu Yan Dao, as well as even the crossbow. Looks like this has to be Sophia, huh? Yes. I can't think of anyone who'd be able to gather so much weapons without her special function. Sophia's special function um, shows undiscovered um, cubes within 10 meters on the map. They've been very helpful when they've been traveling with her. But now it seems she was only using that function for herself. Well, why'd she leave all these weapons here? Even if the shotgun is too um, big for Sophia to carry around. So you think it's weird that she leave the pistol here? Now you mentioned it. Sophia did say she wanted the gun, right? Does that mean she found um, something e easier to use than the gun she left here? I wonder about that. They didn't know what Sophia had armed herself with right now. But well, it seemed they needed to prepare themselves for the possibility that it was a rather powerful weapon, whatever it was. It was with that thought that um, Yuna picks up the shotgun that was lying there and held it out to Akia. Akia. We don't know what's going to happen now, so you should arm yourself, too. But I... No. I know from yesterday you're much fa that you're, fast you're much faster than me. Um, but you're no match against the gun if you stay um, unarmed. Sure are stubborn. Fine, the thing of it this way. You'll need power you'll need power to protect Sophia once we meet up with her again. Oh shoot. Ah, sorry. You're right. I understand your I understand your reasoning. Then No, even so, I don't need a gun. If I'm going to arm myself with anything, it'll be of this. Akira ended up taking the Japanese sword that was also lying there. I'm sorry, Yuna. But I'm more used to, used to, I'm more used to this than a gun. Huh? My family runs a swordsmanship dojo, so... Now that he mentioned it, Akira had rather easily managed to knock away that crossbow arrow with that, um, with that branch yesterday. It seemed that hadn't been a fluke. Even so, for a moment, you would have thought it would be better for him to arm himself with a gun. Akira just looks so natural holding a sword. Fine. Do what you will. Okay. Let's leave and look for Sophia. She should be within 300 meters, right? Yeah, she should be at least.
Nina said that. Um, and walked to the exit with Ak Akia. I um, I need to take a. I need to go for a few minutes. I'll be right back. Sorry, I just, um, need to head for the bathroom and uh, a drink refill. Okay, I'm um, back now. Does the audio still work? Okay, good. I'm going to continue then. I'll just repeat the last line. So, before we continue... Nina said that and headed to the exit with... um. Now, once Nina said that, Akira started walking to the entrance. Oddly enough, his shoulders looked oddly, um, looked awfully broad to Yuna now that he was, um, holding a sword. I thought he was like a pampered, spoiled rich kid. It looks like I'm the one who didn't have an eye, huh? Who didn't have an eye for people, huh? Nina 
Nina muttered that to herself as she put her pants in her pockets. If they miss Sophia now, she had no idea when they get when they have another chance to find her. So to increase their chances, um she figured they'd look for Sophia one more time. It was then that she took out her PDA and turned her function on. When she did, the usage counter dropped from 4 to 3. So please select a PDA number, Jack or Queen. Looks like it hasn't changed in the last 5 minutes. It was with that thought that, um, you know, move the cursor to the queen, um, to the queen and press the select button. You need a special function allow her to see the screen, the PDA screen of the player number she designated within 300 meters. If Sophia was currently using her special function to look for cubes, Maybe they show up on Yuna's map, too. So maybe Yuna could look at her map, too. If they did that, then they'd easily be able to fi figure out Sophia's location. Just then, the PDA screen switched as though Sophia had just turned on her own PDA. Special function one. Um, display um, undiscovered cubes on the map within ten meters on the map. Use this function, yes or no? Special function two. Levels up depending on the number of dead players. Level 1 through 3. Um, display cubes um, within 100 meters on the map. Use this function? Yes or no? Level 4 to 6. Display all player clear conditions and special functions. Use this function? Yes or no? Level 7 through 9. Um, Display all undisco undiscovered firearms on the map. Locations on the map. Use this function, currently unavailable. Level 10 through 12. Display all player positions on the map. Use this function, currently unavailable. Huh? What's this? Why does Sophia suddenly have the have so many more special functions. What's more, it levels up depending on the number of dead players? That wasn't all that changed. The cursor on the screen moved towards, um, and activated the display all player clear conditions and special functions. When it, she did, the player's clear condition special functions appeared one after another. <gasps> no way. You're kidding, right? You know, was shocked when she saw what was there. At the exact same time, you know, noticed the the administrator's bombless malice. The administrators must have seen this turn of events coming. 
Sophia's PDA was originally supposed to have been written in Spanish, and yet... Now that Yuna was remotely accessing it, um, it suddenly switched into Japanese as though it seemed as though it seemed that coming. And naturally, Akira's clear condition was written there too. She could have gone. I wanted to go by without knowing this, but then Yuna realized it. Several questions, several doubts, rose to her mind. Why had Sophie acti activated her special function now of all times? The fourth player had died yesterday, so she should have been able to use it whenever. So why? It's more. What if the reason had been what if that reason had been that she had been scared to see her comrades um clear conditions just like Yuna herself? Which meant that at this moment she'd resolved herself. <laughs> Yuna quickly looked up to find that um Akira's already exiting the cavern. And Sophia's PDA had already gone back to its normal, um, and gone back to the normal standby screen. You couldn't help but feel those two were connected. The timing was just way too good to be true. A certain theory came to Yuna's mind. What if Sophia had seen them entering the cavern? And what if she had resolved Sophia had resolved herself to check their clear conditions while they were in the cavern? And what she should have seen in that, um, when she resolved herself, was that, um, both Yuna and Akira's clear conditions called for her death. Akira, wait! Akira, wait! Yuna shouted then and quickly ran after Akira. Akira, who made half, who made, uh, begot, sorry, Akira, who was halfway out of the cavern by now, looked back at her in confusion. And right after that, Fierce gunfire roar around them. <laughs> they grabbed Akira by the collar and dragged him back in before he could be reduced to Swiss cheese. But the bullets mercilessly cut through the um cut through the cavern stone. And broke the rocks apart along with into with fireworks. The pebbles hitting Akira and Yuna in the head one after another. Yuna, is this gunfire? Yes, it's Sophia. No doubt about it. Um, there shouldn't be anyone else out else here, but sorry, there shouldn't be anyone else around here, but her and us. No way. Then we didn't even notice her. No, sorry. 
Wait, sorry, the maybe she doesn't realize it's us. Sorry, but that's not true. Sophia must have realized that we're the ones here. No. Maybe Sophia's trying to kill us precisely because it's us. Huh? She's already learned you're you're in my clear conditions. That was all it took for Akio to understand. And just as expected. I see. But Akio cut himself off there and looked at Yuna straight on. Almost if she was he was begging her to trust him. He then turned outside the cavern and raised his voice. Please wait, Sophia! We didn't come here to fight! Stop talking! This game has already changed. This is now a world of violence. Much like Sophia's own homeland. And the two of you are no longer my no longer my allies. That's what the that's what the rules say in order to clear this game. So Sophia will kill you two. Akira, get out of the way. I'll return gun I'll return fire. No, Yuna. We didn't we, we didn't go this way fight look for Sophia to fight her. Are you insane? Sophia's trying to kill us for real. But Come on, I said get out of the way! At her boiling point, Yuna pushed, tried to push Akira out of the way, but then... Something small flew into the cavern. Yuna looked to find it was a pineapple-shaped hand grenade. What was she supposed to do with it? Knowing that she'd be dead if they left it alone, Yuna's mind went blank. Those, um, fatal seconds passed by meaninglessly. Right after that, Akira swiftly moved. Yuna, get down! Just when you know, was thinking of um, throwing the hand grenade outside the cavern, um, Akira jumped down on you know, and covered her with his body. A moment later, Grey dust surrounded them in the blink of an eye. Fortunately, Yuna wasn't that badly wounded. But all sorts of debris had punk had pierced Akira's back. Akira! <laughs> Hurry, you know. Use the smoke to escape. Leave the rest to me. There's no way in hell I can do that. 
If I leave you here, you'll just get killed by Sophia. But that said, now that Akira's injured, it's probably impossible for him to take for Yuna to take him and escape. Um, it was probably impossible for Yuna to escape. Um, Sophia while carrying him. Sophia was clearly used to wielding guns, weapons. Ego said that guns, gunfights were a daily thing in Mexico. Um, it seemed that in the area, but perhaps in the area that Sophia lived, all sorts of weapons were a daily thing. What's more, Sophia wasn't hesitating to attack. At this rate, they'd be killed. In that case. Sophia's prepared for that, and I've got a few ideas of my own. It was with that thought that, um, you know, took out her pistol. You stay here. I'll take care of Sophia. Yuna said that she hardened her heart and made her way through the Way way through the dust clouds out and ran outside the the cave. And then Yuna ran as fast as she could while weaving her way through the woods. She found Sophia lying face down on the ground. Um Well, a fixed machine gun stuck to the ground and her eyes on the scope. Found you. It seems Sophia hadn't noticed her. She was probably waiting for this, for the dust in front of the cave to settle. Once Yuna saw that, she held her Beretta quietly at the ready. Aim for the center of the, of the machine gun. And pull the trigger three times in succession. One sec. Yuna's balls hit the engine of the machine gun just as she had aimed, and Sophia, caught off guard, jumped back in a panic. Sophia! Sophia! You can't use that gun anymore! So stop resisting and come! But just as Yuna pointed the gun at Sophia in order to stop, Sophia took out a, a, an oddly shaped blade from her side and blindly ran towards her. She's fast! Once she was about a third of the distance away, Yuna point 
point their sights at Sophia's head. But the moment she stared right into Sophia's eyes, um, her finger went stiff and refused to pull the trigger. Right after that, Sophia ducked. Now she was out of Eunice's sights. She quickly closed the distance. Yeah! <laughs> Yuna jumped back in the nick of time, um, to avoid that slash that was headed right at her hand. Hands. To her, it had been a desperate attack. Um. But the recoil sent vibrations running through Sophia's head. And using the opportunity... <laughs> Nina pointed the, bur the bread at Sophia's face once again. I don't kill her now, I'll be killed myself! Yuna's intense survival instincts pushed aside her sense of reason and, br and brought her to pull the trigger. She was clearly conscious of the sensation of the trigger flowing through her finger. When she looked, um... She saw she still had a little bit of time until, um, Sophia swung the knife again. Once she realized that, her brain immediately ordered her to, um, pull the trigger. In the world of 0 0.1 seconds, um, Yuna saw Sophia's eyes cloud over of despair. But she already felt her, um, her finger being pressed against the hard trigger. And that moment, Yuna. Regretted how she didn't want to be a killer. Gunshot rang through the woods. Yuna's bullet. Sorry, um. Yuna had fired her bullet. But it's, it hadn't pierced Sophia's face. <laughs> That's right. Akio is now standing in between Yuna and Sophia. Akio had brushed her hand right into the air just as she'd been about to pull the tri just she'd pulled the trigger. That's enough, both of you. You're friends. Stop fighting each other. You're wrong. We not friends anymore. <laughs> Sophia suddenly pulled out her knife and swung um Sophia swung down, but Akira suddenly drew his sword and parried it. Sophia san. 
めましょうよ、こんなこと。ソフィア、ストップです。やだ。No。ソフィアのクリアのルール、ソフィアが関わった全部のプレイヤーのシーンになってた。The rule for Sophia to clear is for Sophia to kill everyone she was involved with. That why Sophia、um, stabbed that military、um, outfit man who suddenly attacked her yesterday with this knife and killed him. Nina gasped. Now, Sophia mentioned it. She didn't remember that、um, the crossbow that man had been, ho-、uh, been the man had wielded had been lying in the ca- cave with the rest of the weapons. Akira and Yuna are the same. Two of them are Sophia and Yuna are the same. Two of them are the same. Akira and Yuna are the same. Sophia got involved with YouTube as well. So, you, my targets. And everyone's rules are very dangerous. So, Sophia, kill everyone. Otherwise, Sophia no can survive. She will Sophia not get money. But. Sophia, leave for now. Because Sophia protect,、uh, Akira protected Sophia. If possible, she, Sophia hoped a different person kills you. Sophia, son. Akira sheathed his sword and tried to walk towards Sophia as she began backing away with the knife still held high. However, stay back! Sophia really do want money. In Sophia's, Sophia's country, hell without money. But with money, it's heaven. So, even if, even if it's you, I kill you if you get any closer, Akira. But she didn't want to fight Akira if she could help it. Sophia's eyes said that all. And then, once Sophia slowly backed away and put a certain distance between them. Sophia! Sorry, Yuna didn't even consider aiming at Sophia's back. She quietly muttered. Hey, Akira. What are we supposed to do now? Well, Akira had no answer. All there was was a still silence. Hold on a second. And the moment Yuna began to find that curious, <sighs> Akira groaned and fell to the ground. Yuna looked to find that his body was、um, stained dark with blood from the debris that had pierced his back.
Okay, so uh, we're going to leave it off here. So, yeah, things are accelerating pretty fast now that the um, second stage has begun. And yeah, things are going to shit, to say at least. But, um... Well, I mean, I guess we could hope for a turnaround, but, um, I mean, this is a flashback route, so, uh... We really can't hope for that, but, um... Yeah, I guess that's all I can really say for now. Uh, should probably be, judging from the route, I think there'll be about one or two more streams worth of content. Probably two. And, uh, that'll be it. But, well, I hope to finish this soon. I'll probably be, um, returning to this within the next few days. Since there's only a few streams left in this, I'll, um, try to work on, focus on finishing this off first before returning to my other stuff. So yeah, until then, I'll see you all later.